throughout this video, I'm actually going to be giving you a number of comparisons and examples using this Comica VM20, comparing it to that D to D4 Duo to help simulate real world examples that I think this microphone would be practically used for, including vlogging, podcasting, interviewing, as well as using it outdoors too. I'll also be using this and sharing different examples at different distances so you can hear the differences in audio quality and the amount of background noise that it picks up. And I'll give you some tips as well to help minimize that too. So if you're interested in learning all about this microphone and hearing some comparisons and seeing some real world examples, stay tuned for that. If at any point you wanna learn more about this microphone, find us best prices, or if you wanna learn about any of the other gear that I use to make these videos, you can use the affiliate links down below and help support the channel out. It helps me make more videos like these for you guys. First off, I mean, check out this case. Pretty big. It's got a lot in here. That's how you know they mean business. What do we have in here? You got the mic, always nice to include. Your branded windscreen. You have your shock cold shoe mount. One thing about this, when I was testing it out, it seems to be a little bit more stiff compared to some of the other ones I've had on other microphone systems. It doesn't really seem to absorb and deaden vibrations and movements very well. On your top compartment here, you also have a dead cat. So that's actually really cool. You have both the dead cat and the foam windscreen. And combining the two, obviously you have now a second layer um, to help filter out those low frequencies. I'm gonna be going between a couple locations. Like right now we have very little external noises. So you can probably pick up my voice pretty well and just focus in on it. There's also not very much wind right now. And then we'll be switching to other locations that are gonna be a little bit more um, tough on the microphones where it's gonna be windier. I'm gonna go at further distances and we're also gonna be picking up some traffic too. And then lastly, you have your two cables. You have a TRS to TRS cable and a TRS to TRRS cable. That's a little odd and I'll explain why in just a bit. When you put all the pieces together, this is how it looks. And if you want to add your dead cat, it actually fits and is designed to go over the windscreen. Again, these two microphones are not apples to apples. And while they do have different features and they have unique advantages over one another, they are still targeted towards the same demographic of content creators, people who want to get better audio and they don't want to spend more than like $150. Being that I just recently reviewed the DD-D4 Duo and I think it is a great value, I think it will be great to hear the differences even though they aren't quite in the same category, so to speak. But again, if you're doing voiceovers, any kind of audio like this where you're close to the audio source, I can get even closer here and it's more of like an ASMR experience. I'm very impressed with both right now. I'm noticing very little room noise, which is fantastic. And for this portion of the video that you're listening to right now with the Comica mounted up there, you can't see it, but it's right there. This is a super cardioid, which means it's very singularly directioned to just pick up the sounds coming directly in front of it, kind of eliminating the sounds on its sides. This is great when you're kind of doing these kinds of videos where you're just trying to pick up a singular voice and perhaps you're in a noisier situation and you just want to kind of eliminate all those other sounds and just, again, focus in on what I'm saying. And so while we are in this more controlled environment, I'm going to go ahead and switch between the low cut being off to 75 hertz to 150 hertz so you can hear that difference. So now we're talking without the low cut filter on at all. I'm just going to talk for a bit here so you can just hear it. And then with the silence coming up, see if you can notice any difference with the background noise. Now we've got it set to 75 hertz. So again, I'm just gonna be talking for a bit. Do you notice any difference in quality in my sound itself? When I was actually monitoring it in the post edit, I didn't notice any difference in the actual sound quality of my voice, just a little bit less background noise. All right, and now this is 150 hertz. When I was monitoring this, my voice definitely sounded more muffled. It did help with background noise, but again, it comes at the expense of the main audio quality. If we listen to the background noise now, indoors of notes, it doesn't really help that much. Maybe a little bit more noticeable compared to having it at 75 hertz, but not enough again to justify the decrease in overall audio quality. Up until this point, you've been listening to it with the windscreen and the dead cat on, because again, I found that it helped really reduce the background noise that was being picked up and didn't really come at the expense of audio quality. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off now so we can listen to the difference between them. And now we've removed both of them, so how does the audio sound right now? One of the things that I noticed when monitoring it is that it is louder. So when you do have the combined windscreen and 
dead cat on there, it does reduce your volume level. So you do need to adjust that accordingly. Right now, I haven't actually adjusted it on the mic itself, just so you can see how much louder it is. So this is going to simulate more of a podcast interview style where you want the microphone to be as close to your audio source, in this case, our voices. The microphones don't need to be as sensitive because you're closer to the audio source. And so that should mean that it doesn't have to pick up as much of the background noise that which we're trying to eliminate. So if you're going for the highest quality audio possible, this is kind of what you can expect between the two microphones right now side by side. In a situation like this, the additional flexibility that the Comica offers with its levels built onto it is fantastic because to kind of get them to be as equal as possible, I lowered the audio levels on the Comica to about 2.8 in a monitoring and actually recording directly into the Zoom H1n. This is me talking directly into it, but as we move a little bit more to the left or right, so right now we're on the right hand side, I'd imagine that the Comica picks up the least amount of sound from the side and that seems to be the case. And then when we go to the side here, the left channel, so the deity is still picking up a good amount of it, whereas the Comica seems to not be, which is good. I mean, that's the whole purpose of them. Not very scientific, but it should give you a better idea as to how sensitive they are. What I'm now going to do is adjust the level on my Zoom H1n. So it was at seven when we were very close there and we were hitting that negative 12 to negative six dB target range that you want. We're at about eight. So we had to increase it by one level on the Zoom H1n to account for this longer reach here if you were to do a more vlogging style. Obviously because of this and now that we're further away from the audio source, we're going to be picking up more room noise and that's very obvious right now as I'm listening to it through the headphones. It does sound louder on the Comica. Looking at the audio levels when it's just completely silent, it does appear that yes, the Comica is actually picking up more of that unwanted noise, even with its windscreen and dead cat on. Right now I'm about four and a half feet, maybe five feet away from the microphone, and we are still targeting negative 12 to negative 60 B. Here is the background noise. And with me talking, I mean, how clear is my voice? How much of my voice is it still picking up? and how much of the background noise is it picking up as well. Now listen to the difference between being right here, you know, less than like three inches away from the microphones. This sounds really good. And as I'm monitoring it, I'm hearing very little background noise. This sounds fantastic, in fact. And obviously the concern is this is very close to your face and isn't very good for the video side of things, you know? I'd probably lower this a little bit so it's at least not covering my face up so much. And again, it's still very close to the audio source. It's a little bit further away right now, but it's still sounds incredible in my opinion.